Um, I'm very happy to test this new format. To test this new format, it's not the first Zoom um, meeting we have, but it's the first Zoom conference. And uh, with so many people, I've seen that there are 79 now participating. And I don't see you, which is unusual um, situation for me. On the other hand, I must say I'm quite happy I didn't have to travel to Lausanne all the way and coming back late night. And so let's try how this works. Uh, can you share my screen, please? Okay, oops. Now, which one is this? Good. You can give me the next uh, picture, please. Now I don't see what you are showing. Yeah. I would like to start the discussion with, um, the, with something which uh, happened in February, March. It was a discussion between Werk, Bauen and Wohnen, Tibor Joanelli and Hochparter Axel Simon. And it was exactly about the subject of our talk today. Um, Werk, Bauen und Wohnen, they, sorry, I don't, okay. They promoted a building from SRF in Leutschenbach by Wenzel architect and Palier engineer. And Tibor Joanelli calls it the mo probably the most significant building of the year. And um, on the other side, we have Axel Simon from Hochparte. He counters and he says, it's a muscular show of strengths of yesterday. Cool, but the contrary of an ideal for the future. And we are in as a Baubio in situ who are not doing anything like this. We are in between because Axel Simon mentions that the Bau Bureau shows a different approach by developing properties themselves with a strong emphasis on social aspects and by reusing existing construction elements. I think you have to go forward with the pictures. Sorry, yep, that's the building of Wenzel Palier with this muscular strength, which is supposed to be a real ideal building of this year, the most significant building of the year. And the next building, the next picture, I translated this uh, saying of Axel Simon and Tibor Joanelli, who says, you see, this is why I will miss the aesthetics when we talk about in situ projects. And he emphasizes that with in situ projects, he misses the smooth, even glossy part of architecture, the really contradictory, the salt in the soup. It always looks like bricolage. That's what he says. And this is, and um, next picture. Does he really know our projects? We have some smooth and glossy things, which we did also reuse. Next picture. We can also do contradictory stuff. And the next. it's some salt in the soup or not. It's very difficult to talk about architecture, to describe architecture in words. But still, I think it's a good approach with, if you can illustrate it with pictures. And then we go to the next, pick the next, and come back to our topic, aesthetics of reuse. Aesthetics and beauty are a philosophy, are principles. If you look of, at the ideal of feminine beauty, if you look at a Rubens from the 17th century or a model Twiki in 1968, you can see the cultural difference in time of beauty and aesthetics. 
Next. Or if you compare the ideal beauty of nature, a real size blossoming tree compared to a bonsai tree of the Japanese, there is a big cultural difference in what is considered beautiful. Next. Also in architecture, you can see different kinds of how go around. These buildings are about 500 meters from each other. And um, it's a real cultural difference on what is beautiful or what is aesthetic. Okay, but now let's come with the next picture to a different and one more different system of aesthetics. A few years ago, a friend of mine gave me this book, which is called Wabi Sabi, for artists, designers, poets, and philosophers. And Leonard Cohen, an American, explains this quintessential Japanese aesthetic, which is called Wabi Sabi. He says, it is a beauty of the things imperfect, impermanent, and incomplete. It is a beauty of things modest and humble, and is, the, is a beauty of things unconventional. Next. In addition to wabi-sabi, there is an art called kintsukuroi in Japan, and it means repairing broken things with a golden glue. Next. And I hope you agree with me that this repaired bowl looks much more beautiful and it means more to people than if it had never been broken and it was just even and net, neat and clean. Next. I think that we have to revise our understanding of aesthetics if we want to like reuse and upcycling. And if we don't like what we do, we will never do it well. I think it's very important to evaluate the marks of the use of something. Next picture. Look at these old stairs. How many millions of feet have stepped on these stairs and have polished the stone or the wood? Next. We have to appreciate the traces of history and not covering it. You see these floors, industrial floors, timber floors repaired with some cement infills. It looks like a picture. Next. We have to keep and cheer the identity of things, of buildings, of areas, of towns, of villages. Look at this. Doorbell. How many hands have pulled this bell? And how many hands have cleaned it? You still see the traces of the cleaning of how of hundreds of years. Next. And we have to accept imperfection, which is something very difficult to Swiss people. I have only realized when I was in Africa how perfect our construction is, how well done, how proper, how clean, and how expensive, on the other hand. If we can live with this cat on the window, we don't need to do anything. It is there. It is repaired. No water enters the window. But, of course, it's not clean and neat. Next. I'm going to show you now two projects, one in Liesbüchel in Basel, and one which is uh, following this Liesbüchel because it's taking part of Liesbüchel to Winterthur and building up a new building there. Next. Liesbüchel was a distribution center of co-op and it had to be it was sold because it was not perfect enough anymore it was not safe enough anymore coop wanted to build something more economic and they 
sold the old area, the old fab factory, and started to make a plan on how to keep part of it and how to demolish another part of it. Next. We were very lucky that part of this newest construction, which was to be demolished, had not been welded together, but it was screwed. And so we could unscrew all these iron beams and prepare them for reutilization. As I said, we had already a project where we wanted to use it, and this is in winter too, and this we are going to see after. Here you see the iron beams prepared for transport. Next. Another bad a picture which makes my heart cry. Demolishing a whole building in order to make, um, to separate the two buildings which had been joined together with this um, unbow and we demolished the unbow, this connection, so that the two buildings can function independently again. Next. And you see here exactly there's a new road, ex uh, or a, a former road is opened again. And on the right side, we now have a building with an open flank, which we have to close again. And here we come up with the idea of using old construction material in order to close this building and to be able to use it again. Next. You see the plans. They are quite small on the computer screen, but you see the um, green surfaces, these are metal sheets, and then the red uh, squares are windows. And the gist of it is that all these windows are different. We decided that we would use different windows, which we can get from different places, and make a, a rhythm with the old metal panel sheets. The next picture, please. Here you can see it from the inside. It's easier to understand. We are collecting windows of different sizes and arranging them in a way that from outside, it looks like a, you get a rhythm, you get an order. And what you also see that they are reassembled in panels of two meter 50 width and covering three floors height. Next. Yeah, this uh, we can jump to the next one. This is the mock-up where you can see again what I explained. We have gathered 200 different windows. Some are white, some are wooden in appearance, others are brown and we compose them together with these metal sheets to make a new facade. Next. This is how it began. We, are, we asked all the uh, window factories around Basel to know if they had some remaining windows, maybe wrong sizes or wrong materials or orders which were not completed. And they gave us all these windows free of charge. And this is how we designed our facade starting from the existing, but having the framework of what of the facade we had to do, which is about 100 meters long and three floors high. So we had on one side, we have the big frame and on the other side, we have the small elements. And then it is like a, a Lego game. How can you combine the two? Next. Here you see the plan of all the windows. Sometimes we have a few which are the same, other times 
there's only one of one size. And the result you have already seen, but there will be more pictures about the result, please. The next. We did not only harvest the um, windows, ask people for windows, we also asked for insulation material. We didn't want to use, if you go one back, please, to use the old insulation of uh, glass fiber because it's nobody knows if it is uh, good for our health. But we started to use rock fiber. That's the next picture. And we also used these uh, metal sheets which were demolished. Next. We also found these grills and we thought we could use them to make balustrades in front of the windows where we need, um, how do you call that, an Absturzsicherung. Next picture. So then we were looking for wood, for timber, and we found it near in the harbor of Basel where there was a building demolished. We tried to save all this timber and some more in the next picture from an almost new hall, which was also demolished. So we collected all this wood and brought it to a carpenter's factory in the next picture. And the man, he cuts it all to the same size and glues it together to the sizes we need. Next. Here you see already the, the Hetzer Träger glued together from these old pieces of wood. Unfortunately, at the time we didn't get enough, so we had to put also some, use also some new timber from Swiss forests and all together, the old and the new one, we started to make the frames where afterwards we put the windows in. The next picture. Here you already see the frames with the openings for the windows and the rest resting surface which will be filled up with the isolation material. Next. And one more. It is always a, you have to think differently when you use used construction material because for example here the cuttings, the offcuts, do not completely fill the frame. So we had to add some flocks, some uh, even smaller material, which of course is new, and to make a complete perfect insulation. On the right hand side, you see also the elements, already the elements, three floors high, as I said, two meter fifty wide, and they will be joined by these metal panels. Next picture. On the outside, we cover it with a special new material inside as well. And this is one of the important principles. It is very, very hard to make a building only from used material. You really get to a border where there are so many constraints for all sides that you are really forced to use also some new material. I think in the future we will be measured on how much old material we can use or the owners of the work they can prescribe and say I want 20%, I want 30% or I want 50% and then the architect will have to look for existing material and join it with other. And there's also where the aesthetics come into the game again, because you can always join the old with the new. And this is when 
things get much more in interesting and you can steer your aesthetics. You can still make something important out of it, something looking new and it doesn't need to be a bricolage. Next. Now we see how the frames come to the construction site from the factory. Next. And with a crane, they are lifted up and combined with, to form the facade. And now nobody would suspect that these windows are old windows. They are not really old, but they have been um, rubbish. They have not been used anymore. And with our design, we gave them a new life, a second life. Next picture, please. And here you can already see how this will be joined and these yellow stripes will be covered by the green metal sheets so that you get this rhythmic facade which you have seen on the plans before. Next. There we are. It's almost finished. Unfortunately, I don't have a picture without scaffolding, but uh, you can come to Basel after Corona and see the building in the Elsässer Straße, or you can ask us to be shown around. Next. And here, the grills I have shown you in the beginning, sometime they really were the right measure. Sometimes we had to cheat a bit, but the, the rules and regulations are all fulfilled with this balustrade. Next picture. You see the importance of this facade. Martin has in the beginning mentioned the Bauteilbörse, which I have found it almost 30 years ago and where we mainly were dealing with small elements. A kitchen here, a bathroom there, some tiles, some uh, wooden floors. And this Liesbüchel is the first time that we really work in a big scale. And this is where we can make a difference, producing less rubbish, less waste and saving more new materials, materials which otherwise, otherwise would have been bought and produced again new. Next picture. And from the inside, there's a special view which has made it in the next picture, even on the title of the Tech 21. With the mirrored in a in the water, which is not supposed on the floor here, but things happen. Okay, this was Liz Büchel. You can ask me questions afterwards about this project. The next picture, we are going to Winterthur. And the next picture shows you again where this, uh, whoops, something is wrong here. Okay. I'll have to change. This is the exhibition at the Architectural Museum in Basel, where we presented this project even before we began constructing, constructing it. You see a lot of material which we have been hunting and harvesting from different sites. sites. You see again windows, you see screws, you see models, you see metal sheets and so on and they are now being built in to this building on Lagerplatz in Winterthur. Next picture. Okay, here we have the project. We have an old building of one and a half of no two, three stories 
you see the gray part, the gray found foundation. And on top, we build another three floors. On the left side is a staircase with terraces, which is added onto the building. This design is now a mix between what we want to do, what we, the, the owner of the house wants to have, three floors more, and with the materials we found either on site or, as I said, in Basel. The whole steel construction from this one building in Liesbüchel has been reserved, been dismantled, painted, exa examined, and um, from, has been calculated by the engineer in order to build the three floors on top of this old house. Next picture. Again, where, we, where it comes from, from Liesbüchel in Basel to the next picture. Uh, first, I show you also other building materials. These are the metal sheets. This time they are red. This another um, topic is that when you use used materials, you do not decide on the color. You get what you get, and either you can manage with this color or you can paint it over. But painting it over does already cost money and uses new material, paint, which probably does not stick as well as the original paint to these metal sheets. Next picture. Also for this project, we were harvesting windows, but this time it were old windows. Next picture. We collected them and we had another idea here because they do not fulfill the rules for insulation. We combine two windows. We, add, we take the old window because it was just in the adjacent building we could rec um, recover them. And in order to fulfill the insulation regulations, we are doubling it up. Next picture. Sometimes things happen also which are accidentally. We planned to harvest these doors. And when we came on Monday with the lorry and people for the dismantling, we found these doors being destroyed, see the next picture, by the police who had made an exercise on Sunday on how to open doors when you don't have a key. But they were lucky enough, there were enough other doors which were not destroyed. So we could take enough doors for our building. Next. Here we lay out the windows which we could recover from this building, which is also not existing anymore. And we continue to combine these old windows with our new building. Next. We clean them, we repair them, we test them, and we prepare these windows for reutilization. This is an important information also. It's very rare that when you get old building elements, it's not at the time you need them. If you are lucky, you get the elements before you build. If you are unlucky, you get a telephone two weeks after you have ordered new ones because you didn't find the old ones. And this we could prevent by building a much bigger network and by having much many more projects where you can use construction elements when they come up. In the meantime, we have to work with storage and more transport, which is of course costing a little bit more than if you can transport the elements from one side to the new one directly. Next. Now we come back to the architectural museum and you see here the facade in a axonometry sort of 3D. 
you see the first layer are the metal panels, the red ones. Then we have the windows. Then we again build a framework of timber. This time it doesn't need to be so strong because the facade is an infill and not a construction in itself like in Lisbüchel. And here we decided to fill up the frames with straw. The next picture shows the backside of it. You see the straw, you see some timber floors, you see some stone floors. And of course the straw will be covered by clay so that we can follow all the forms which the windows leave besides them with their irregular shapes. And you see one of the doors which has not been opened with dynamite as the others before. So this um, exhibition was made in Architectural Museum in Basel, but lucky enough, it served also as a mock-up for the Stadtbild Commission in Winterthur. When they saw this, they agreed that we could leave open even the color of our building and tell them when we know how, what color it will have, uh, that we can change the plans. That's another tip. It's uh, very important that you have a good relation with the authorities because you don't, when you have make your building proposal, you don't know all the details yet. So you will have to make your proposal in stages and agree with the authorities that you can go on in this way or maybe it can be slightly different. Next picture. This is the one, one of those which I showed falsely before, but it shows also the map, the harvest map, where you see the pictures on the Swiss map where all these construction elements came from. This is of course not really economic to collect things from so far. On the other hand, we must realize we are in the beginning. And as I said before, as soon as we have a bigger network, we'll have need less transport from one place to the other, and we will need less storage for things which are not available at the right time. Next, please. I just want to show you quickly a few pictures of this iron or yeah, this iron beams. Next picture, that's where they came from. For fire resistance reasons, we had to fill these T-shaped beams with concrete and we had to add this sort of nails to make the connection between the, the, the construction and the floors. Next. Here you see the funny nails which were welded on the T-shaped beams and the fire protection by concrete. Next. Now they are already in winter tour. This photo is about two weeks, was made two weeks ago. We are now building up these three new floors on top of the old building. Next. We had to make some diagonals because of the earthquake security and also the other things which the fire security I explained already. You see now the old facade, you see through the old facade and the new construction goes one floor down into the old facade and it will go three floors up. So it's actually four floors together of new construction. Next picture. That's how it looked two days ago. The whole construction from Basel is built up here again in Winterthur. Next. The floors will be made from old trapeze panels as well, which are a lost uh, shuttering. Next. 
they are already being put in place and the view from down will remain as it is with this raw industrial flare. And you see also here, the beams are all screwed together and not welded because we already think of maybe in the next 30, 40 years, this building might be dismantled again. And if we think circular, we have to stop welding steel and screwing using screws. Next. So this is what we hope to see in uh, next spring, 21. You should be able to come and visit the whole building. One detail I would like to point out is that corner on the right side, which is protruding over the old building, we had to decide either to cut the beams or to give the building a special shape. We decided for the special shape, why should we cut the beams when it is stat statically possible to have some few more square meters of usable room up afterwards. So we, that's how this corner is explained. It was not done for aesthetical reasons, but it was just the way it came. And I think it's quite funny. It's maybe despite the salt in the soup for Tibor. Next picture. That's it. <laughs> That's a little, little reminder of the first days of the Bautalbörse when we really did small stuff, reused a few windows, and now we are really moved, we have moved to a bigger scale. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much. Uh, so I hope that uh, we will meet again all soon online in this meeting. And now I propose just uh, to activate all the microphones so we can uh, clip clap for real. Now, what's in on and we can keep you. Bravo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all.